What's up, Whack Pack Genius here. Hope you're all well. I'm going to continue with Dior. Even though I said I was going to start a new theme for March, I, I started with Diptyque. I was three days in, and I, I cut it back, and I just said, I'm not done with with uh, Maison Christian Dior. I did pick up 13 of these last month, and the month is definitely not enough time to get to wear them all, get to know them, appreciate them, and really truly understand what they are all about. Um, for me, I don't like to spray a perfume on for a few minutes and, and, and say, yeah, that's what it is. And a lot of times, we'll I'll go into a department store and base a fragrance just off a sniff on a blotter, and it's not usually the best way, but um, I've been really harsh on this brand. You know, deservedly so, but, you know, when I test a fragrance, I like to do full wearings, minimum eight hours, several times, and um, really get to know, you know, the nuances and the complexities or, or lack of complexities in, in, in the case of some of these, but... You know, we've I've been shitting all over uh, Francois Demache, um, the Dior private line, even their designer line. But um, we're going to get a little bit deeper into this and discuss, you know, just where the downfall started and how this trend has continued. But my very first aha moment was the first time I had smelled... Queer Canage and Patchouli Imperial. Well, firstly, you know, I always felt like Dior has been chasing Chanel. To me, Chanel is the epitome of, you know, uh, finely crafted perfumes. They're not exactly the boldest things, but they're by, by far some of the most well-made perfumes out there. They, they are what I find very, myself very comfortable in, fine French luxurious perfumes it's kind of my go-to and it's my gold standard chanel exclusives and I always felt like you know even Dior, even though dior kind of came out with um you know the three it was bois d'argent and, and cologne blanche was it blanche and there was the third one au noir way before the exclusives but it was just three and they kind of held it at that that was about 2004 or five. And then Chanel released these, their exclusive line, you know, the one with Coromandel, um, Queer de Russie, even though Queer de Russie was, you know, done in the 1920s, but they, they revamped it and along with the several others. And then it was like two years after that. So there's this kind of cat and mouse game going on between Chanel and Dior. In 2009, Dior, or was it 2010? I'm not exactly sure. Dior released a bunch of uh, Christian Dior Privé, Leather Oud, Oud Espahan, Ombre Nui, and whatever else was in that line. And um, my first my first notice at what was going on was when I smelled um, Queer Canage and patchouli imperial and both kind of reminded me of um what chanel did with their leather and their patchouli fragrances even though uh dior's are a little bit bolder and they're a little bit more exaggerated they're definitely not as finely tuned as the chanel's they are louder and and a little bit more obnoxious but they're very very resemblant to what chanel had done just a few years prior which is very surprising um, coming from a brand like Dior. And this was right about the time when Francois Demachet had taken helm. All these years, Christian Dior's never had an in-house perfumer like Chanel has. And I guess they've kind of caught notice of that as well and wanted to have their own in-house perfumer, maybe just for image sake. But, you know, a lot of their classics were done outside by outside perfumers. And then another thing that really struck me was when I when I realized like Chanel like Dior has always been about being bold and being avant-garde and being you know they were really edgy and just did whatever they wanted. They kind of had a chip on their shoulder and they didn't really care, you know, 
and they really stood out in that way even though they weren't as finely tuned as chanel they weren't you know chanel's les exclusives they're impeccable to me um the dior preves they're not so they're not so masterfully crafted but they stand out just in their appearance alone you know they're really edgy and 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 different and unique and that's kind of what what your you know their underlining moment is just that stand out about them and all that kind of changed in you know there was a one or or two year period when they had released and this was you know the mighty downfall of christian dior for me where i said what the fuck is going on they had released and i'm not sure which order this was but it doesn't really matter so in their their privé collection they had released feb delicious and col noir and in their designer line it was sauvage and what you can see here yeah. is these are all very different than what they've been known for for releasing bold um, compositions you know feb delice um, very sweet very trendy very easy to sell everybody wants to um, smell sweet and 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 easy you know nothing challenging nothing complex about it um, you know a, a great fragrance if if you're into that thing it's just really not for me um, it's very for the masses and Le Col Noir too is a gorgeous rose perfume but lacks a lot of the complexities you'd expect from a major brand like Christian Dior for me, you know, Christian Dior was always like when I had first discovered Dior and Chanel the way I know them now. Well, back then I was, you know, Chanel was always my I preferred brand over Dior and conversations would constantly come up Chanel or Dior, which is better, which is your preference, which is your favorites. And and I'd see the online arguments or, or battles. And to me, it was always Chanel, but you know, I, sometimes I second guess myself. I'm like, are they really better? I don't know. Like Dior's just got all these amazing perfumes that I wish, you know, Chanel would be more like Chanel's kind of a little bit outdated, but they're really classy. And I, I had these internal struggles for a while and, um, you know, I kind of doubted myself. Maybe Dior is better. I don't know. But and now I look, you know, where I am today, I, and I look back and I'm like, no fucking way in hell. There is not even a competition. Um, Dior's just totally gone down the shitter. And um, just with them constantly um, discontinuing fragrances for me is a complete loss of integrity. They don't really stand behind. Well, it, it seems to me like they're not standing behind their creations or or revamping just to make something new and modern and trendy and and sellable instead of keeping on you know to these perfumes and eventually making them classics like the way um eau sauvage and diorome will be one day but um yeah and then you know sauvage came out and sauvage to me was apparently their response to chanel's bleu and we, we're going to see this more and more and more um, after Sauvage is a lot of copycatting or it's not exactly cloning, but it's like, all right, they're doing that. Let's and it's working for them. Let's see if we can maybe um, repeat it and make it a little bit better. So is Sauvage better than Blue? I don't know. That's that's uh, subjective. It doesn't really matter. What does matter is um the way Chanel is always constantly reinventing itself, I think Dior would be better off doing the same instead of um, just kind of riding on the coattails of, of Chanel, which they've obviously been doing ever since. Um, so we've got, you know, the Patchouli Imperial, the Queer Canage, um, comparison to Queer de Russie and Coro Mandel. That to me is extremely apparent. They're not identical clones, but, you know, it's it's almost as if a student had uh, submitted in a paper, not exactly like his friends, but he had read it once through and couldn't recite it word for word and just rewrote it into the best of his memory as possible. That's more of what it is than an exact copy. 
Um, what else do we have here? Oh, I did pick up. So I did a um, a live stream of Santal Noir where I couldn't smell a thing. I was completely anosmic to this. And I've worn it a couple of times since. <laughs> and I can't say I'm exactly thrilled about it. I'm just very neutral. Um, it does fit in more along the lines of um, Nitsa and Leather Oud and Oud Fahan and Spice Blend than it does Tea Cashmere and Sakura and Lucky and that sort of thing. So it's it's more along, more along the lines of the heavier things. But again, you know, I've seen some of the comments in my videos and people are asking me, does it smell like Egoist or does it smell like Santal Noir or Santal from the girl on Santal Royale? And I got to say, damn, you know, they're not exactly, but there are portions of both of those in this perfume. I was, I was sitting here meditating last night and um, after, after my shower, I, I, I put on one spray of this um, below my chest level. I didn't want to bother. I usually don't wear perfume when I meditate just because I don't want to be thinking about perfume. I want to have a clear head. And as I was meditating, I kept thinking to myself, why do I smell ego East? I, why am I getting with? And, and, you know, and it occurred to me, I had sprayed Santal Noir on. So there's definitely that resemble again, there's that there, Chanel reference but um, it was obviously that ambrette musk that I was picking up from Santal Noir. And it's not exactly like um, Santal Royale from Guerlain. It is, it is screechy and harsh and abrasive um, the same way Santal Royale is. But it definitely lacks the complexity. It's very linear. It doesn't match with Santal Royale in any way, shape, or form. It's, it's, it's very doesn't have the depth it's it's not nearly as exciting as Santal Santal Noir but um yeah just I I don't know just very screechy and harsh linear again I don't know I don't know what the word is but I definitely um I don't see what the fuss is about Santal Noir definitely not it's not my thing, to be honest. Um, Spice Blend, I like this a lot. Spice Blend, I like a lot. But again, there was references to um, Spice Bomb. This smells like Spice Bomb. There was another one that this reminded me of. Um, what else did this remind me of? Damn it, Spice Bomb. one other fragrance that this remind me of two fragrances oh it was from Maison Francis Cordillon Grand Soir so again you know very unoriginal smells great you know it works it's effective but it's not unique it's not what Dior should be um it's just really all rather unfortunate you know when I look at the past couple of releases from Chanel they're Les Exclusives uh, 1957 Totally and completely unique. It smells like nothing else out there. You you can't compare it to anything else. Um, boy, fougeres have been done a million times, but boy is pretty innovative to me. You know, there's there's no fougere that smells exactly like this rose geranium based fougere. Um, pretty unique. Mesia, there again, you know, there's lots of waxy lipsticky accords out there. Um, but none of them are exactly like Mesia. You know, I, I can wear Mesia and there's it doesn't remind me of anything. You go to Hermes, you look at their last three um, Hermesence releases. They don't remind me of anything. Um, Agari Ben, a smoked oud uh, fragrance, Cedar Sombach, you know, a, a pissy, skanky jasmine. Pretty unique. Doesn't really remind me of anything. And um, there's the rosy. Mer Eglantine, you know, again, nothing out there that it reminds me of. You go to Guerlain's last exclusives. Um, even though the Absolute Dorian are completely trending, you know that that oud-based theme. 
there's nothing like they don't smell like anything out there. And, and Terry Wasser's already created what seven or eight of these now, and every single one is unique on their own. Yet they all kind of resemble each other in a package sort of way. But you can't smell one and say, yes, that reminds me of such and such. Or um, Embram's D. Lang, their last arts and material, doesn't remind me of anything. You go to Cartier, I can't remember the last um, Lazur that they've released. I'm kind of out of the loop with Cartier, even though I do collect some of them. But, you know, none of them really remind me of anything. They've released six or seven of their Oud fragrances in the, um, the Hours Voyageuse. And, you know, all very unique. Like, seven Ouds to be unique today is unheard of, you know. So, there's definitely a theme with, with Dior and, you know, constantly, I don't know. It just feels like they're chasing or replicating or just not being unique enough but um here's a couple that i do like okay here's a couple that stand out for me so might be enough of shitting all over francois demache and dior but here is and these two you know are very similar to each other but these are kind of um two of my favorite this is dior amour and Belle de Jour. So they're both kind of powdery floral, not kind of, they are powdery florals. Uh, most macho men, masculine dudes probably won't appreciate these. Um, so Dior Moore is an iris based theme and Belle de Jour is rose. And they're both kind of fruity florals, woody fruity, no, woody floral musks. So powdery, with a nice vanilla base. They're very similar in the base, kind of. So these two are similar to me, like Udis Fahan and, and Leather Oud are. So they dry down very, very similar. They're very parallel. And the biggest differences in them are in the opening. And that's how I find these two. Belle de Jour might be, is a, it's got a huge pear note, sparkling pear, almost like a pear, you know, that's been soaking in booze for, um, I don't know, a certain amount of time, but it's, it's pear and rose. And this one is, uh, less pear, but way more powdery. This to me, Dior Amour is very powdery and it's just like a very modern, elegant, warm, soft, sensual fragrance, which I love. I'm, um, obsessed with it kind of a little bit more than Belle du Jour. Um, I've been wearing this quite often recently, and this is probably right now my favorite in the category of waxy, cosmetic-y, lipstick-y, you know, that kind of thing. The thing that Chanel's created, but they've actually perfected here. Yeah, Francois Demache, I think he's actually perfected that accord. And, you know, Chanel is usually kind of put that accord in backgrounds and the lots of their perfumes but here he's made it the main focus that's what it is it's a very pastel-y warm creamy um waxy cosmetic-y lipstick-y kind of thing so there you go oh here's another one that i really like um new look 1947 and this is uh tuberose it's a slightly pissy, very woody tuberose, a slight touch of incense. And I really love that pissy aspect. But not only that, it's got a, a spicy, man, I don't want to call it animalic, but it's a spicy, peppery clove note. So you take that, you know, old man clove note and that pissy jasmine and oh, it's just, you know, really good. And I always thought this was a Maison Christian Dior release, but looking at, you know, the database, this was released, you know, way back when. This is a lot older than I had actually thought it was. So maybe that's why it's as good as it is. But this is really good. This is another, you know, it's a pure floral, but it's a woody floral. And I think that clove note will pull it away from becoming too, too feminine. So I do want to talk about Purple Oud. I've, I've sourced a bottle of Purple Oud. I found one in the U.S. I'm traveling to the U.S. in just a couple of days. Uh, my bottle's already arrived at the destination, and it's 
insane how fucking hard it is to track this stuff down. Purple Loot is available on the website, but it's not available at Dior boutiques or it's not available at, I don't know. It's, I found it at um, Bergdorf Goodman and they only had the bigger bottles, which I prefer the 125, but I'll take whatever I can at this point. And the weird thing is the day that it arrived to my destination, my sales rep here in Toronto called me to inform me that Purple Loot will be arriving in Canada tomorrow. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> um, yeah, Purple Loot only available, you know, it was very, the, 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 um, the availability is really strange. I mean, I think Dior's, one upped Guerlain in terms of exclusivity and and just the way they logistically you know separate their perfumes and make them so hard to find. But Santal Noir is only available in the Middle East and Harrods in London, from what I understand. So it's kind of fucked up to be a Dior fan at this point. Um, you know, as a collector, you kind of want all the pieces to finish your collection or not. You know, we're all different. But, uh, you know, that's always a challenge. And um, I don't know. I don't know. Apparently, you know, I'm, I'm hearing there's, there's uh, Grand Ball is going to be discontinued. Talking to the Bergdorf Goodman rep, she told me Grand Ball is going to be discontinued. So I grabbed a bottle of that. That's heading with um, Purple Oud to um, my destination. Um, also picked up a bottle of Deauville which isn't available here as well. So there's that as well. Um, yeah, so it's kind of a fucked up time to be a Dior fan, but I'm, I'm thinking, you know, since it is rock bottom, there's only one way and that's gotta be up. It, 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 you can't get any lower than this, but I've also heard like, every day I'm hearing about new discontinuations. Feb Delicious is supposed to be discontinued, or at least I'm hearing, but it's not from official sources. It seems like it's more rumors um, but before I go, let me just say as much as I bitch and whine and complain and, and, and throw down on Dior and Demoche, I've smelt a lot of niche and a lot of indie in the past few months. Um, people sending me stuff, get togethers, you know, samples here and there. And I have to say, this is way more my comfort zone than all that other niche stuff. I'd much rather wear something that's really well made, finely tuned and crafted than something that's, you know, out of balance and it smells really, it smells really bold and it's unique and nobody else is going to smell like you. But, you know, at the end of the day, if it's giving me a headache, I'm not really interested. So I'd much rather stick with Dior than, um, I'm not afraid to say, out of my comfort zone. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Give this video a big like. Drop your comments below and let me know um, what you'd like to see for future videos. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you soon.